Hello, and welcome to Greet the Week. I am Mona Duncan, and today we're going to be talking about uh, getting a new picture album. And uh, getting a new picture album. Let me bring the screen up. And uh, we will talk about or look at what we've been looking at for the past few weeks is we've been studying on the uh, pleasure pain syndrome. And the syndrome is kind of a habit that we fall into without really evaluating to see if it's effective or non-effective. And so this is, there's eight, this is the eighth of the, that particular uh, thought. And uh, down here, this new picture album I wanted to share with you before we go to the, doing the, is that in 1998, July the 3rd through the 9th in Orlando, Florida, the Glasser Institute was having their annual presentation and it also was for those of us that was ready to be certified and at the end of those few days we would become certified with reality therapy and choice theory and uh, that was one of the days that I really did begin to get a really new picture album because things in my life personally began to change more and more more of the information that that I had studied and learned from was beginning to stick <laughs> but I'm going to stop sharing here for just a moment because I want to show you uh whenever we were there and we were uh, I don't remember if it was at the beginning or at the end but well I do too it was at the end that each one of us if you can see this and this is my handwriting here this is my putting on here we were asked to take our piece of paper where we could, you know, where we could make notes because they wanted everyone there. There was 15 of us that was going for certification. And every one of us was asked to give a quality of some kind or a thought of some kind to the different people that were in our group. And so uh, we were asked to take our paper and put our name at the top and then on the left-hand side to write down everyone's name that was in there in the circle. And then we were to go around and each one of us listen to what everybody else was saying. You know, whoever, no matter if we put them in alphabetical order or not, or, or in, in a person order, just put your name down. And when that person was getting their input, when someone was getting their input to that person, they were to write down what they said. Is that making sense to you? And so there was this one guy. I had my list here and I was writing down, you know, people would go by and they'd said Mary Ellen was, was uh, inspirational. And uh, someone said that Chris was uh, faithful and loving and kept going on. And whenever they got to Mona, the one that was going to say what Mona, what they saw about Mona was Lothar. And he was from, Germany and Lothar said that he saw me as being alive and everyone in that group there just kind of hooped and hollered and said alive that's the serious thing I ever heard of everybody's alive we're all alive and old Lothar said yes okay he got out his German dictionary to see what alive really meant he said yes I, okay you're right all of you are alive that Mona is more alive than most of you. And that was something, I mean, that was a picture that I could see. And it didn't, I don't know that it really impacted me so much until later, whenever we were doing role plays. And in doing a role play, uh, there was a lady that was coming around and, and she was in deep mourning and very sad. And I think about half of the group had already worked with her a little bit you know to ask her a couple of questions and so they passed it on over to me and so we were sitting there and I was giving her some input into 
into her sadness and asking what was going on and so forth. And then I, I was sitting there and I reached over like I was reaching over to a coffee table or something. And I picked up and brought it to, to my lap. And I said, uh, this is your picture album. Do you mind if, may I look, may I look at your album? And she in her sadness, she said, yeah, yeah. And so I, in motion, I opened it up and I began to look. I said, oh, is that your mom? Is that your dad? And began to look at it. And I said, and then I turned a few pages and we talked about who was there. And then uh, I looked and then I, I said, that, you know what? Who is not in this picture album? And although the person that was role playing was a good role player anyway, I mean, she literally broke down into tears. You know, we were all always told not to role play yourself, but she broke down into tears because the person that was not in the album was deceased. And it was, a, it was, well, it was a child that had been miscarried. And then years had gone by and she still was not able to, you know, anyway, it was just something about that is looking at that perception how we perceive things, how we see them, and how, anyway, I may just be rambling here. So we'll go ahead and get started with the, uh, with the, uh, Well, <laughs> I'm not finding my permission to share. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a little recap about what our total behavior is all about. It's about how one thing relates to one other thing. It relates to another. And notice that that thing is, you know, kind of italicized because it's not necessarily a person as such, but it's one thing. It can be a person. It can be a bunch of people. It can be groups. It can be, but it's in one thing. And how we relate to, or how we understand, or how we um, and whenever we are dissatisfied, we begin to seek another path. It's like you know, there's something else. There's got to be something else, and we never give up on trying to feel good. On trying to you know to to meet those needs that are deep inside of us. We never give up on you know wanting to wanting to get away with that grumbly in the tumbly or to get away to that sadness or whatever. We never give up on not trying to feel good. And in the process, sometimes we really weave a tangled web in that we begin to look at something that it is remembering that all behavior is total behavior. And looking at us as a human being, we have two arms and we have two legs. We're looking at our behavior call with the Glasser Institute. We are looking at the thoughts and feelings leading the way, the thoughts and actions leading the way, and the feelings and the physiology following behind. And they're all total, they're all wheels, and they're all rolling together. Um, may not be making quality time, but all rolling together. And uh, then that part of that is our feelings. And that feelings has a tendency to be in touch with the physiology. And the physiology is that autoimmune system sometimes just takes over because we are not, we're being active and we are being destructive. And so uh, why does the immune system take over? It's because we're trying to please the mind. We're trying to please the mind. And the physiology of the brain changes with the physiology of the body. Uh, 
Dr. Glasser would use the running and sweating. You know, if you run, 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 and you begin to get hot and start to sweat, it is the running that is producing the sweating. It's when the body begins to take over and do what, what exercising or explaining what the body is doing. So in looking at a new picture album so that we can see things differently, it's to begin to look at new vistas, new things, you know, and it doesn't have to be going to different countries. It can be, but it can be as simple as walking outside and listening to the birds sing and looking at things that the, in ways you had never looked at them before. It begins to whet the appetite to learn and to grow that this is, this is here and this is now and this is what was, but let's look at what is still here that is uh, available. And then looking at our paradigm shift, to, instead of always going in the same way and it has to be this way or that way, to begin to be okay with changing your mind. That living from our imagination more than our memory. Those memories are sad. Those memories are hurtful. Those memories, you know, did something to cause some difficulty. Look more from the imagination of how you can overcome it and how you can live through it and how you can be kind and forgiving. And begin to have some dreams that you can dream and begin looking more to your imagination. Believing it, believing it, that when you believe it, you will see it. And there is so much truth in there, even though it sounds kind of odd and strange. But if you really, really begin to believe it, you will begin to see the transformation taking place. You remember that little engine that could, the fairy tale story, the the little engine that was going up the mountain, it was steep, steep, steep. It was difficult, difficult. But he kept saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And eventually he tipped over the top and he said, oh, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. And as we begin to see things with a little different focus, we can begin to see them. Uh, it can begin to affect us totally for healing. And then also learning more about basic intensive training. So our perception is the way we see something. It's the slant we have on it. It's the how aware we are. Or we can stick our fingers in our ears and not want to listen to anything that's going on. What we're perceiving. I don't want to hear it. It's our viewpoint. It's our opinion. It is what we are prejudging. Whether we realize we're judging it or not. Our perception. Our perception becomes our reality. I mean, if we see that the tree is, is waving in the wind, uh, it becomes your reality that maybe you can even feel the wind blowing rather than just seeing it. From, if, you know, if you can get from behind a window where you can actually feel the breeze blowing on you. Our body adjusts to our perception. We, it adjusts to the perception. If it's cold, the body begins to, to shiver. If it's hot, the body begins to sweat. The body adjusts to our perception, the way we are seeing things. And it can become angry. It can become upset. It can, it can become forgiving. Our perceptions may not be real. The way we are perceiving something, the way it looks, the way we think that it is, it may not be genuine. It may not be true. We may be seeing something completely out of skew. And all of us are subject to perceptual bias, meaning that we tend to see and hear what we want to see and hear rather than really listen and hear what is going on. We, we, we want to, to do that. So some more about perception. Perception, feedback is how reality interacts with us. We've perceived it one way, but reality is saying, no, nope, that's not the way it is. This is the way it is. And that reality, that feedback, reality interacts with us. It responds to, it comments, it helps, it hurts. If it's, re if it's really real, if it's really meant to be, then it'll be okay. <laughs> And every thought that we think has a physical component to it. Every thought, whether it's sad, happy, frustrated, giving up, succeeding, every thought we have 
has a physical component to it. And we look around, especially if we're in a new environment, we have a tendency to look around to see what's normal because we don't want to be the odd one out. You know, what is acceptable? What's the status quo? But sometimes in doing all those things, uh, we become just, well, we become like a puppet on a string or something of doing what we've always done. And our perceptions change through our honest evaluation, through the way we assess something, through the way we think about it, contemplate on it, review it, examine it, the way we think about it initially, and maybe the way that we rethink about it. Our perception changes as we begin to really evaluate to see if this is legitimate or not. So here is just some thoughts on evaluating and looking at it from one to 10. One would be, well, it's okay, but you know, 10 would be really being much, much better, more improved. And so just some thoughts to incorporate into that as to which would be the, you know, in setting goals, in managing your time. Or is it always that you're too frustrated with your whole life? And so that picture album might as well just stay there and, and gather dust because you're not, you know, keeping managing the time. How credible are you being? How are you, how good are you at problem solving? And or, you know, helping others to see things from a different way. What about your creativity? How you communicate? What you think about yourself, your self-esteem and the way you, you carry yourself. What about your compassion? Uh, your energy, your follow through, your self-development, those kind of things. You know, as you continue, as you mull over them and think about you because you're very important. And then here is another way of looking at it from uh, Pete Peterson's looking at uh, life. And here are our five basic needs of I put in spirituality as a basic need. Dr. Glasser only had the five. But it's looking at, you know, is it would go hand in hand with looking at the uh, at at the uh, well anyway. There's one more thing here I wanted to share with you. Back when, I think it was in 2019 or 2020, that we were, several of us were working on the basic intensive training to be through the, through individuals that you know, could be individually purchased and worked on your own. And so this is the uh, one thing that, Anyway, it was one of those days. Have you ever had one of those days? And this, that particular day in time was one of those days. And I was just so frustrated with some things that were going on. And so I just pulled up the uh, journal, the reflective journal, on what we as a group were working on. And I just got off to myself and I did it all. To, you know, I just did some thoughts. And I want to share them with you today and see if there's anything that you might might give you a little hint about self-evaluating or making your, anyway. So this is from, this was from the, think of several scenarios in your life that are troublesome. Well, can you think of one that's troublesome? And then it, we were asked to describe one of those scenarios. Well, this is my scenario. Like I say, it was a day that was, anyway, double speak. An individual will ask you to listen to something or to read something and then will not shut up and let you listen or read. Have you ever been there? Anything like that? Mm -hmm. And so the next question is in self-evaluating, what are you doing about it? Well, in my frustration, I was typing it out. I'm showing my frustration. I'm getting cursory attention. I am agreeing with their input just to get him to shut up. 
I'm not willing to give my input that would lead to more diatribe. No way to keep it going. Another question. Do you want others to change? So as I think about it, you know, begin to soften a little bit. Yes, very much so. Definitely. I do want others to change, but I realize deep down inside myself that I have to change myself too. So the question, what is within your control? And so I'm thinking my response, my honesty, my attitude, my continued high regard of this person, although it's kind of deep, kind of difficult. Can you change your behavior to get what you want? So this was the end of it, but I went ahead and wrote it out anyway. And I've kept it since then. And every once in a while, when those situations kind of arise again, I go back and I look at this. Can you change your behavior to get what you want? Yes. And it is easier than my want things my way would have me think. I can speak up and politely ask for silence so I can concentrate on what they want to share with me. I can realize that this is all about their control and wanting to fix me. Therefore, I can choose to courteously hear their input after I have read or listened to what they want me to read or listen to. I can casually respond with, that's interesting, without engaging their harangue. I can go outside to meditation, prayer, and honestly looking for possibilities in their slant. You know, sometimes people may be telling us something we do not want to hear, and it may be very, very viable. So as I can calm down, I can listen to their slant. I can honor the person, if not the opinion. I can use the disruption as a life lesson in patience and kindness. I can go pick up lunch, and together we will let bygones be bygones. <laughs> So uh, that that's pretty much what I had. I had another little poem here. If I can get down to it enough. It's a progressive blessing that we can <laughs> live each day. May you awaken each day with excitement over a new day. May you revel in challenges and ugly triumph. May you embrace change as the life-giving force that it is. May you be released from what may be keeping you stuck. May you be encompassed by peace and turbulence. May you experience restful sleep and pleasant dreams. And may your last thoughts be one of a simple thanks. So, think you can do it? Well, I think you can. Many blessings.